Northrop Fry described romance as the foundational literary genre. Romance is the structural core of all fiction. Being directly descended from the folk tale, it brings us closer than any other aspect of literature to man's vision of his own life as a quest. Building on Fry's insight, Gillian Beer defined romance as the genre in which readers and writers imagine and fulfill the most exalted of human desires, especially those desires which cannot find controlled expression within society. In an 1833 lecture he delivered at Salem, entitled The Importance of Illustrating New England History by Scenes of Romance, Senator Rufus Choate, Dartmouth, 1819, extolled the romance's power to cultivate reverence for the past in Americans who preferred looking to the future. By awakening the sympathies of those who have gone before, romance makes us mindful also of those who are to follow, and this binds us to our fathers and our posterity by a lengthening and golden cord. Frederick Jameson has proposed that the genre of romance organizes a utopian realm for modern readers wherein obsolescent cultural forms can enjoy a kind of archaic afterlife. Richard Chase, Dartmouth, 1937, exploited all of these aspects when he turned the romance into the generative force needed to elevate American literary studies into a reputable academic discipline. Chase accomplished this aim with the publication in 1957 of the American novel and its tradition, whose argument turned on the decisive contrast he established between the American romance and the European novels the British academic F.R. Leavis included with the unimaginably influential The Great Tradition. In the American novel and its tradition, Chase claimed that American writers of genius, like Poe and Melville and Hawthorne, aligned their creative intentions with the stuff of romance rather than the novel's usual business of manners and morals. As proof of its role in establishing a unique American literary tradition, Chase attributed the following characteristics to the American romance. One, an assumed freedom from the ordinary novelistic requirements of verisimilitude, development, continuity. Two, a tendency towards melodrama and idol. Three, a more or less formal abstractness. Four, a tendency to plunge into the underside of consciousness. Five, a willingness to abandon moral questions or to ignore the spectacle of man in society. All literary genres lay out a horizon of expectations that guide readers in their interpretations. But the elasticity and semantic openness of the romance solicit a veritable cornucopia of combinations and levels of meaning. The works we take up in American Renaissance feature different romance variations. Jim's moral romance with Huck's conscience. Ishmael's epistemological romance with the mystery of Moby Dick. Harriet Beecher Stowe's evangelical romance with abolitionism. Ralph Waldo Emerson's representational romance with nature itself. Frederick Douglass's quest romance for freedom. Walt Whitman's epic romance with American future. In the following passage from the Custom House preface to the Scarlet Letter, Hawthorne described his aesthetic romance 
with the things of his daily life that, when brought into contact with the imagination, are so spiritualized by the unusual light that they seem to lose their actual substance and become things of the intellect. A child's shoe, the doll, seated in her little wicker carriage, the hobby horse. Whatever in a word has been used or played with during the day is now invested with a quality of strangeness, remoteness. Thus the floor of our familiar room has become a neutral territory, somewhere between the real world and fairyland where the actual and the imaginary may meet and each imbued itself with the nature of the other. In the 1950s, romance provided teachers and students with a genre that they aligned with the bountiful imaginary underpinning American exceptionalism so as to proclaim the distinctive value of American literature. But the genre of American romance underwent a drastic change in standing and function at the turn of the 21st century. When the literary scholar Nina Baim characterized the American romances whose predominantly male protagonists lit out for the wilderness and who found creaturely comfort in solitude and who preferred the companionship of natives of untamed forests or the castaways in uncharted seas, as all of them melodramas of beset manhood. And after exposing the complicities of romance quests with the United States' ongoing imperial adventures, literary critic Amy Kaplan has recently recommended that scholars and students of American literature end their romance with American romance. Mm -hmm.